Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Stable. Welcome to the game blog of June. Today's game blog video is going to be a bit different to the ones I've done in the past just because I want this to kind of be a bit shorter. Maybe I'll try and pick and choose like what I think is most exciting for you guys. But of course, if you want to read it all, I will link it in the description so you can check it out because I love reading all of it. But I know sometimes you guys might not find it as entertaining and uh, sometimes they turn into really long videos. But yes, today we're looking at at Magical Horses, my first content ambassadors and player character update. So let's kick off the summer with a great collection of topics. Our amazing lead artist Lotta. Oh my gosh, I'm really, I'm not going to attempt the last name because it's got the accent. <laughs> Is here to talk about the work that goes into creating Magical Horses, our talented content game designer. I, I'm so bad at names. Linnea? 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 She has her experience in creating her first piece of content for Star Stable, followed by our incredible community manager, Michaela, writing about our brand ambassador program. Ending this first summer blog is our skilled programmer lead, Yvonne, with a new player character update. Magical Horses! Magical horses are a way for our artists to express ourselves in ways we don't get to with normal horses and create the fantasy horse of our dreams. Personally, I like doing opposites such as good and evil, light and dark. This is the theme of our two favorite creations, Ayla and Umbra and Shadow Shield and Snow Dancer. I chose the lighter breed of Arabians as I thought they captured the feel of winter spirits. For Ayla and Umbra, we took inspiration from the lunar eclipse. We wanted a full moon horse and a blood moon horse. That's really cool. I really like hearing the uh, thoughts behind the horses, if that makes sense. I find behind the scene content just so intriguing for anything. Like I love seeing the completed product is great and all. But like I love seeing like the behind the scenes of YouTube videos and like films and everything. Like you bet as soon as I finish watching a film or a TV series that I really enjoyed, I'm like Googling, trying to find behind the scenes footage. I don't know. Explorations. Here we throw out ideas about colors and patterns as quick sketches rather than full illustrations. When something catches our eyes, we repeat the process by combining those details. So here we have our first image and oh my gosh, I find these so intriguing to look at because I feel like it's also, it must be challenging for them to release content such as this because I can already see people commenting like, why'd you choose that version? You should have chosen like the other version. The other version's better. And it sucks. It sucks that, you know, it's great that everyone has their own likes and dislikes, but it must be so hard having to make a decision because I, I don't know. Does that make sense to you guys? Whoa, I just, I really like these ones with the red and the blue and the blue one up here. They're really cool, but I'm also really happy with what we actually ended up getting and everything. I just really like seeing all the concept art. It's just so fascinating to me. Just step-by-step -step process is so cool. Oh my gosh, and we have Ayla and Umbra ones as well. Oh my gosh, okay. So here I guess we have one of the first iterations. See, all of these horses are so gorgeous. You know, in the end, like, we might end up getting more of these horses anyways, because when Star Stable released the fish horses, they also released some concept art for a bunch of other horses, and we'd, we've ended up getting two of the concept art from that. We've got, like, the lionfish and the catfish. Obviously, it was different breeds and everything, but I showed you guys in that first, like, I think it was in the Next Up in Jorvik video when we learned about the fish horses that I was like, look, um, concept art, which looks like the cats that we got a sneak peek to. I'm really Really liking A. A looks so like oh my gosh. They're just all so pretty. I am one and I know that not everyone likes magical horses and I do like realism and everything but adding like a little bit of spice, a little bit of fantasy is always super fun especially the way Star Stable does it. I really enjoy the way Star Stable does it especially since Star Stable's already got quite a bit of magic in like the story mode anyway. Story mode? The storyline? Story quests? Whichever one you want me to call it. <laughs> And I also really love how they bring out magical and non-magical forms because you kind of get two horses for the price of one. Like, yes, they might be slightly more expensive than if you just bought, like, say, the Arabian. I think that Ayla and the Umbra might be more expensive than an Arabian, but maybe not. I don't know. I have a bad memory. So, like, if you were really fussed by it, especially with the new mode where you can choose to, like, choose between whether you want magical or non-magical at any point because it used to be like if you were out in the wild not in a city then it would be magical but if you were in a city then it was non-magical but now you can choose like 
I know it might feel dumb, but you could always just buy the horse because you like the non-magical form, but just never use it, you know? I don't know. I'm not sure if they're more expensive, but they can't be that much more expensive, especially if you really like it. I don't know, fight me or something. I don't really know. These ones here, whoa. I really like how in this one you can kind of see, like, this one looks like the Ayla. So you can really kind of see where, like, the first kind of inspirations began to come from. Look at this one here. Whoa, I love, I love that. And this one looked like it would be so shiny. Oh my gosh. And here we have the last iteration. That is so interesting how they actually still have this one here. That kind so obviously we've got like, what, Ayla here. I guess it was still kind of in contestant, in competition with the actual Umbra that we ended up getting. Ha, huh, I love this. This is so cool. Yeah, so iteration three was combining the details we like. When we're happy with the concept, we start painting the horse texture. Some new details are added and some details turn out not to work out in the game. The finished product is never one one with the concept we also come up with a non-magical coat that matches the design i think this is also a reason that like yes star stable has weekly updates but they don't work on an update for just a week they're working on it for like weeks in advance or months which is why i think sometimes people are like finally star stable has listened to us but i think the thing is that we have like people demand things and it can't be done in a week so when they see it done in the reasonable time that you can code stuff into a game, they're like, finally, Star Stable's listened when Star Stable might have listened all the weeks ago and started working on it. But, you know, they had to work through everything. Like, just to create a magical horse, they've had all of these design options and they've slowly brought it down and down again and then how to actually put it into the game. Like, this doesn't happen in a week, you know? I don't work in the game industry, so I can't, like, say exactly how long it would take, but... It would take longer than I think, maybe longer than we expect, if that makes sense. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to my first content. Hello everyone, my name is Linnea, Linnea, and I'm a new member of the design team working on Star Stable Online. Oh, new, new member. Maybe that just means they've switched, switched teams because some of the team members like change kind of roles after a period of time. But anyways, if you ever wondered who puts together all the quests and races and make sure it all works, it's us designers. Oh, I just released my first piece of content in the game. The new quest trade about Professor Hayden in Hollow Woods and writing a book about horses. And I would love to walk you through my experience creating it. So please let me my ears or eyes, I suppose, but at least definitely your attention. Oh, that's so sweet. Every design has a different approach to how they come up with and make content, but I usually start with a question. The question varies and can be every anything from how do we make this race more interesting to what should the focus of this festival be? Oh, I really love that. The editor is the software used to implement, implement content into the game. To make sure everything works together and functions properly, I started with a very bare bone version of the quest chain with lots of placeholders before fleshing it all out into its proper shape. When everything is working and finished, it's time for testing, testing, testing. Designers play through the chain together and quality assurance, work their magic and go through every detail of what I've made. And when they deem the quest chain good and stable enough, it is ready to set free, release into the game and into your hands as players. All right, so I kind of read only a little bit of snippets for you guys, but I've read it all myself and I highly recommend if you, you can either pause the video right now and read it or jump over to the Star Stable Entertainment website and take a look for yourselves and read through all of this. But let's move on to the next section, which is what is an ambassador? Hello, I'm Michaela, also known as Game Master Michaela. I hope I'm saying that right. And I am the community manager and the one in charge of our brand ambassador program at Star Stable Online. I am here to write about what an ambassador is, what they do, and how you can become one. Brand ambassadors are regular players in the Star Stable Online community who stand out as influencers and role models. They spread positive energy and they take the time to help other players. Ambassadors do not get paid to be in the program, but they do benefits. They do get benefits in the form of star coins, gifts to use for giveaways, and they get to see sneak peeks ahead of time. We encourage an open dialogue with full transparency both ways, and also encourage our ambassadors to give honest reviews of the updates or features that are released. What does a brand ambassador do? Ambassadors for Star Stable get to do different things. They can help us with beta testing features before they get released, host giveaways with items that we provide such as notebooks, books, or gift boxes, and they can collect feedback from our community regarding different topics to share with the game team. Our ambassadors get to take part in updates and share their feedback with us before we make any announcements. For example, I sent out a monthly email to the ambassadors that gives them insight into what is coming up next month, kind of like the roadmap that we share with you all but with more details. 
We also have a chat server where we have all the ambassadors together with employees of Star Stable gathered. We use a server to easily share thoughts and ideas with the ambassadors and in return they share their insights and any feedback with us. We also have a monthly ambassador talk over voice chat where we go a little bit more in depth about different things that are coming up. All of the details are there for eyes only at that point. One of the perks of the role. You can ask them what they you can ask them what they think might come in the future, but they have the tough job of keeping them secret too. Our ambassadors are quick to share feedback and help out when we have when we need more information. A great example of this is the Riding Hall revamp. During pre-production, we watched so many videos and investigated feedback from the community about the area. Thinking we understood exactly what things are needed. We were so excited for you all to see it, but it turns out that we had not understood entirely. When looking into how to correct our mistakes, our ambassadors helped immensely with collecting and sharing insights we needed. All that information helped us understand more in depth what it was that was actually missing so we could fix it. I choose and invite players into the ambassador program based on my own research, as well as some recommendations that I received from players, other members of the Star Civil team, and sometimes even our ambassadors. Right now, applications are not open, but they will open again in the future we will share information on how to apply in our news and on our social media pages again when it's time so that was a little bit about ambassadors i feel like ambassadors might be qu more common on instagram than youtube i know that like some of the ambassadors from instagram also like post on youtube and everything i don't know that's just my musings which is totally fine it's just if you don't have instagram you might not be as well versed in what ambassadors are and things like that so i thought it was cool to do this okay moira what are you doing i can e what the heck bro i don't even know i think she's trying to eat something let's move on to what player character update oh she's playing with a bottle cap okay i have one technical lead for gameplay and one of the gameplay programmers working with making the updated player character work in the game while the team are updating the art assets additional features related to player customization are also being developed like body shapes and while implementing these new options in the game, making it possible for players to customize their character, we also want to take the opportunity to improve the underlying solution for how character appearance is handled in the game. Instead of simply making the new character work with the old and more limiting systems, we want to start fresh and refactor the existing code solution to make it easy to work with and easy to expand with new features in the future. Refactoring existing live systems can pose many different challenges. With character appearance, we need, to recon we need to consider all of the already existing character appearance data stored in the database for each player, owned makeup and hair, worn makeup and hair, eyes, and so on. The change to a new underlying solution should be seamless to the players as if nothing really changed at all. What players might not see is that suddenly us developers might have opened many locked doors that will allow us to expand and explore more features in the future with ease. A first step on refactoring appearance change logic is to separate the head shape, skin color, and makeup. Why, you might ask? For the older characters, these three different parts of the head appearance are combined together into one head item, and each head item has a unique texture. 336 variation to be exact. An example of why this becomes very inflexible is when we want to add new makeup to the current character, then the artist would have to create a new makeup texture for every available skin color. And if we want to expand our range of skin colors, the artist would have to, for every skin color, create a new texture for existing makeup variation. This is not only time consuming, but also bad from a performance perspective. More texture to load in memory, which would make the game like bigger, possibly more laggy, I believe, because like it's making the game bigger. I don't, yeah. <laughs> By separating the different parts, we can enable the possibility to produce more content in more flexible and less time consuming ways. And we have our first look at it as well. It is so weird to see current makeup on the new character models. Like this one here at the bottom kind of is like a gist of what my makeup in the game looks like. Obviously it's not this one, but it's just so, it's gonna be weird. Like I know we need a character update, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna feel so weird. So I'm not sure if separating these does anything else, whether they can be more creative with makeup. Like it looks like they've separated eyebrows from makeup. I wonder if that would mean we can choose different eyebrows and things like that. But this is what we have so far. And yeah, it's just so strange. It's just so strange to see current makeup on new models. Isn't it amazing? Next month, Scott Clary will present his work as a technical animator on the project. Oh, an animator on the project? We're hearing from an animator. Are we going to be seeing the first, maybe a couple of animation, maybe like the rigs of the animations? I'm not sure they've included videos so far in these blog posts. 
Hmm, interesting. Hope you enjoyed all the wonderful writing. Stay tuned for next month's vlog. Now enjoy a refreshing beverage and soak in all the sun. Happy summer. Star stable. As a southern hemisphere person, I feel very misrepresented here because it is winter. And I've just realized that I didn't turn my heater off for this, which means you might be able to hear it in the background. <sighs> it's better than back at my old house. There was like crickets in the background. Um, cicadas, not crickets. Cicadas in the summer are just so intense in Australia. Anyways, that is the game blog for this month. What are you most excited for? What was your favorite part? I really like hearing about ambassadors and things like that, um, but I already knew most of that information because the ambassadors have spoken about it on Instagram before. I really like the player character updates, but sometimes I feel like they can feel a little bit repetitive, like, but I know that it's a slow process and obviously they can't just give it to us all at once. So it's cool to see like these little snapshots and like learn what's going on right now and really learn why it's taking so long, you know? This is why it's not, it hasn't come out yet, you know? Oh, and I also love seeing the, these are just awesome. <laughs> but I hope you guys are having an awesome day or have had an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye. Ah, Moira. <laughs>